Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and coders of all ages. My name is John, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a robots.txt file with Next.js. Now, you might be sat there thinking, big deal, robots.txt, it's just a text file, I'll whack it in my public directory, and job is a given. Well, that is kind of true. However, if you're using Next.js with a headless CMS like Contentful, it is very likely that you're going to be working with different environments. Now, the last thing you want to do is have an environment like production, staging and development, and then having Google call your development and your staging environments, and then all those results get magically appeared in Google. That is a no-no. So what we're going to do is create a dynamic robots.txt file. Now, if it's on staging or development, we're going to disallow everything. I'm only going to have the correct policies if our environment equals production. So to do this, we're going to be using a plugin, and it's called Next.js Sitemap. Even though it's called a sitemap, we can actually do our robots text files with this plugin. It's going to be amazing. It's only going to take a few minutes and it's going to be very beneficial. Woo. Now, if you haven't come across one of my videos before, I said my name is John and I do weekly YouTube videos on stuff like JavaScript, C Sharp, productivity, developer tips, all of that beautiful stuff. So if you haven't, smash that subscribe button so you don't lose this content. Now, assume you've done that, let's create this robots.txt file. Everything that I'm about to walk you through will also be available to download from my GitHub. So if you go over, clone my Next.js sample site, if you get stuck, you should be able to see where you've gone wrong and hopefully get yourself out of trouble. Now, I should also say that I am doing this on a Windows PC. And as normal, you have to go through a few extra hurdles just to get something working on Windows. So I'll also go over that. So this will work for Mac and Windows users. However, the first time around, just do it for the Mac people out there. Now, the first thing that we'll need to do is install this plugin. So what we need to do is an npm install and then next dash sitemap. Now we can do this as a dev dependency. So we can do the dash dash save dash dev because we don't need it in the production build. Click enter, boop, boop, boobity boop, boobity boop, 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 Yes, and there we go, it has installed. Now, after installing this package, the first thing we want to do is head over to our package.json and we're going to install ourselves a little script. So in our scripts, we're going to create a post build. Now, this will run automatically whenever we do a build. So in here, we're just going to have site uh, next dash sitemap. Now, this little line right here will not work with Windows. Yeah, what's going on? There we go. This is going to throw an error, and this is the bit we're going to have to fix for you Windows users very shortly. So stick with it, but for Mac users, that is all you need. Now, the next thing we need to do is create ourselves a little configuration file. And what we're going to do is just do a next dash sitemap.js. And in here, we're going to put ourselves a little bit of logic. So it's in here, we're going to either say web crawlers, spider everything, or if we're not in the production branch, disallow everything. So what we're going to do is create a variable called policy. And in this policy, we're going to create a object and it's going to have a thing called user agent. And user agent is going to allow all of the user agents. Now we're going to do a little check. Mm. And we're going to use an environment variable. So we're going to do process dot env. And then let's call this environment doesn't equal production. And then in here's we're just going to put a policy. And we're going to do a, a disable, or disallow, sorry, disallow. And then we're just going to do the root directory. So we're not going to allow anything from happening. And that should be an equals, silly billies. So that's all we need to do. And then we need to do our classic module exports. So this is the bit where we're actually configuring the next site map. So module, no S, exports with an S. And then this is going to be an object. And the first parameter we need to configure is called site URL. And this is going to be our site URL. So again, this is going to be another thing you can potentially configure per environment. So process.unv.url. 
so we'll create this very shortly the next thing we need to enable the robots.txt mode so we need to do generate robots hooks no e tricky people and then enable it with a true next we need to configure it with robots text options and then we're going to have ourselves a beautiful little object and we're going to have a policies and then this is going to be an array and then we're going to pass in our policy then finally at the end we're going to have a little comma and we're going to define where all of this should be created so we're going to do an out door and this is going to point to the next.js out directory, which is dot slash out. So this is all we need to do to configure our plugin. So we've got our policy, which is allows all the user agents. And then we've got this environment check where we're going to disable the root node and everything underneath it if we're not in production. So this should make sure that nothing gets spidered. And as you can see, we've got a little bit of config here. So everything's very nice. So the next thing we need to do is create our environment variables. So we've got one which is called URL, and that's just going to be this. So HTTP uh, johndjones.com, why not? And the next one is called environment. And let's call this one develop. So we don't want our sitemap to work. And that is our environment variable done. So the next step that we need to do, actually, let's go before we do that. Let's quickly show you what's going to happen. So if I do a clear, and now if I do an npm run post build, what we'll see is a little error message. And this is the error that the Windows users need to fix. So let's do that quickly. Mac users, you can ignore this step. Let's fix that pesky error for us amazing Windows users. So what is happening is the next sitemap plugin uses that next-sitemap.js to configure things. And on Windows, the way that Node works is it's getting at next-sitemap and it's taking off that JS part and it matches on file path before file name. So what is happening is it's scanning our Node modules, seeing the folder called it next-sitemap and it's trying to load that folder as a file. Very silly, silly, but we can fix this using a very easy, simple plugins. So all we need to do is do an npm install and then we just need cross env. Boom. And off we go. Boop, boop, boobity boop. And next thing we need to do is go over to our package.json. And basically when we have this post build script, we need to update it a little bit. So all we need to do now is just do cross env. Cross dash env. And then we've got our sitemap. And then we just need to do dash dash config. And then we just need to do next dash sitemap dot js. So post build cross env next dash sitemap dash dash config space next dash sitemap dot js. That was a lot to say. So let's go back to our terminal down the bottom. Let's do a clear. And now if we do an npm run post build, we should hopefully no longer see that error. Kaboom! As you can see, everything has now worked. So if things have gone according to plan and we look within our out directory right here, that's the thing that we specified in our config, you can see that we now have this robots.txt and we've also got our sitemap. So clicking on robots.txt, you can see that we've disallowed all the things. We've got our host, we can also have a look in our sitemap and as you can see for every single page we've got a beautiful sitemap now if we go to our environment variables and i would call this production click save go back up here clear and then do an npm run post build what should happen now is if we go back to our robots you can see that our disallow has gone. So now you have a way to create dynamic robot.txt files, which will allow the correct web crawl behavior depending on what environment. And in the process, we've also created a nice little sitemap for your Next.js application. Enjoy it.
As you can see, it really is super simple to create that robots.txt file using the next sitemap plugin. Now, this isn't the only way to create a robots.txt. You could create it manually. Another way is that if you're using the Netlify, within your netlify.toml, you could create some environment configuration attributes and then specify which robots.txt to load. However, I really like this plugin because not only are we doing the sitemap, we're also doing our robots.txt. So I quite like this way. What do you think? Leave your thoughts below. This is one of the reasons why I really like Next.js and some of the new Jamstack technologies. Traditionally, it's taken me ages to do some of this setup and configuration. However, using Next.js and its plugins, it really is super simple to do a lot of these things. Anyway, we've got to that stage where I need to plug some of my things. So as I said at the beginning, if you want to be an absolute legend and you haven't done this already, hit that subscribe button because I do weekly YouTube videos. You want to learn about web development, coding, become an absolute coding legend, hit subscribe so you don't lose my videos. If you want to do me a absolute solid, hit that like button because it helps the YouTube, the YouTube algorithm show my videos to more people. So I'd appreciate that. I also do a weekly Sunday newsletter and I give you a load of links and tips on stuff that I found interesting on that week. There's no spam, it's just basically me tippy tapping away at home. So if you want some free industry news, learning what I'm up to, below there's a link. Go over there, sign on to your newsletter. You can unsubscribe very easily. Otherwise, I hope you found some value from this video as always and I hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are. Happy coding.